Today, the Chinese Communist Party has issued yet another white paper on Tibet, except this time it's not on Tibet. This time, the white paper is on Shizang, a word the Chinese Communist Party is replacing now in official documents to refer to Tibet, another example of linguistic colonial operation. We will talk more about the strategic importance and its possible political motivation behind this with the spokesperson of the Central Tibetan Administration, Tenzi Lekshila. Lekshila, welcome to Tibet TV's program. Thank you. How is the Central Tibetan Administration taking this white paper by the Chinese government? The, uh, the striking thing is uh, the absence of Tibet. And all through the documents, the only there is about Shizang. So it's very confusing, first thing. Because all through the time, in all the official white papers, uh, which uh, since the Chinese occupation of Tibet, they had established more than around 14, 15 white papers in Tibet. But this is the only white paper which they talked about Shizang, not Tibet. So this is one thing which is uh, uh, very striking in a way, and, which, uh, and it is also uh, very politically right, uh, which in a way try to de-associate Tibet from the memories of the Tibetan people and from the international communities and try to come up with a new narrative of their authority and their, uh, 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 the submissive of Tibet uh, into the Chinese Communist regime. So this, however, is uh, in fact from the CTA's point of view, I think uh, the Shizang itself is not acceptable, first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Shizang, they are only talking about uh, so-called Tao region, but we in the sanitary administration, we talk about the aspirations of Tibetan people all over China, right? So therefore, uh, when we look at the glance, uh, it consists of lots of misinterpretations, misconceptions, and, uh, and lies. Do you think that the Chinese government is, uh, in, in, in issuing this white paper, is in any way concerned with the welfare of the Tibetan people at all? Uh, this whole document, 32-page document, talks about the aspirations of people, but somehow the Tibetan people is missing. So uh, we wonder what kind of aspirations they are talking about, uh, whose aspirations they are talking about. So, uh, but uh, when you look at the conclusions, it's all about state stability. It is not about people. It is not about Tibetan people. Rather, it is just to fulfill their political ambition and to tell the world that everything is fine, beautiful, happy, prosperous, which is not true. I came across a lot of uh, uh, claim uh, of successful society, developing society, and a lot of developments that China is claiming to have uh, made in Tibet in terms of launch of uh, successful campaigns, in terms of um, uh, uh, installation of theme parks, cultural industry parks. Uh, what do you think that China's measure of development and success and harmony in number of material developments implies? So when you look at the forward of this document, uh, one thing they talk about, or the first page, in fact, the first, uh, the, there are six, six chapters. And when you look at the first chapter, they talk about the aspirations of people. So uh, they have drawn the aspirations of people on the benchmark of material development. Right. right. So uh, in fact, the Tibetan people, our aspirations is more about preservation of our language, identity, culture, and ecology. But in this white paper, most of the pages are filled with the, uh, the material developments mm -hmm. and the symbolism of material de developments. Therefore, uh, though they have, they have put so much money on that, but somehow the utility of these theme parks, we of this, all these things which they have been do doing, uh, who are the benefactors? Right now, under Xi Jinping, this document somehow tried to uh, impress upon uh, the leadership of Xi Jinping. Whatever arguments which they have built upon in this document, which is, uh, which is sugar-coated somehow, mm -hmm. and also it is not factual, mm -hmm. and it is only meant for political reasons. Right. And in many ways, this document fails to show that uh, in how and in what ways these material developments that they are claiming to have done in Tibet have actually benefited the Tibetan people or have actually helped in fulfilling the aspirations of the Tibetan people. So while we talk about 
the the aspiration of Tibetan people in promoting and preserving their own religion, culture, and Tibetan identity. Uh, one of the uh, one of the points they talk about is promotion of mainstream social values, and in that the CCP has said the region has increased educational activities on history of the party, history of the People's Republic of China, the history of the reform and opening up, the history of socialist development, and the history of its ties between the sh between Xizang as a region and the country as a whole. Has has helped officials and people of all ethnic groups in Xizang to develop a sound understanding of our nation and of our country and of our history, culture and religion. Don't you think this is a perfect example and a very um, explicit way of telling how the Chinese government is using these cultural sites, uh, religious and historical sites and museums as a propaganda tool? Yes. For China, everything what they have done so far is only to show off to the world that everything is fine and beautiful, right? In fact, you have just mentioned about all these uh, educations, right, policies and reforms. It is the political indoctrinations, right? We talk about the residential, colonial style res residential schools. In these schools, these kind of educations were being given where the party is the supreme, where they have to follow Xi Jinping's thoughts and ideas, where they have to adhere to all the, the guidelines which the CCP has. Mm -hmm. And it seems like CCP is just like a god. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, whatever they have put upon, they, they are good in numbers. All through the white papers, even the earlier also, they were very good in numbers. But only thing they lacked is how much it helped how much Tibetan people benefited from these material developments. Right. So far, for, for us, as being the voice of the voiceless Tibetans inside Tibet, these things are, okay, these are needed, but these things are not the primary thing which we are longing for. The Tibetan people need a freedom to exercise and preserve the language, culture, identity, the theme parks are just the structures. It is not the essence of the culture. We have seen so many cases of brutality, suppressions, torture, right, all through the time. So therefore, uh, China has to be truthful to what they have to say. They cannot just tell lies after lies all the time. But uh, Chinese government, without meaning it, may have um, kind of admitted to the fact that the Tibetan people in uh, the so-called Shizang, <laughs> Shizang region do not have the language and educational rights because they have they themselves as clearly mentioned That's what true. are being taught. So I was uh, going through one of these uh, solid progress in ethnic and religious undertakings point, and they have talked about the heightened s heightening the sense of Chinese identity, and they have also touched upon the um, process of reincarnation, how it should be lawful, quote unquote, and they are fully guaranteeing the freedom of religious belief by uh, exercising uh, religious activities in an orderly manner. In what ways do you think the Chinese government is attempting or is continuing or has started to um, uh, violate the very essence of Tibetan Buddhism, uh, very essence and the very practice, unique practice of Tibetan Buddhism in uh, of reincarnating the religious uh, leaders and figures? Uh, China, in their own constitution and, in, and all the time they've been talk talking about promotions of rule of law mm -hmm. and democratic values. But what they do is not, uh, is totally opposite to that. The party stands above the law and they have been introducing many rules, many laws just for the convenience of the party. Just for the present convenience, they are introducing so many laws. For example, right, order number 19, just recently, right, they have introduced order number 19. They had, earlier, they have done order number five. They had many rules and regulations which they have been doing. Mm -hmm. And that cannot justify by, by saying that they are law abiding. Mm -hmm. The laws which they have been introducing are all political in nature. Mm -hmm. They only think about their own stability. So, therefore, on the reincarnation, because in this white 
paper, so-called white paper, they have mentioned, strictly mentioned that the reincarnation of His Holiness Dalai Lama and Panjian Lama should be within China. And it should be through the golden urn. It should also be recognized by the central government. So they have already created so many conditions. But somehow it is not by the tradition of the Tibetan religious functions. So therefore, they are going against the religious traditions. Right. Right. They are, their laws, their practice on the religion is simply political in nature. Mm -hmm. They try to emphasize their own authority, which is illegitimate. Right. They don't have any historical authority mm -hmm. on the reincarnation of His Holiness Dalai Lama. So as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. His Holiness is the only one who is the legitimate authority on the reincarnation of His Holiness. Right. So one point, and I quote here, it is also specified that reincarnated Tibetan living Buddhas, including the Dalai Lamas and Pension Rinpoches, must be looked for within the country, decided through the practice of lot drawing from the Golden Urn and to receive approval from the central government, unquote. So these kind of very clear statements from the Chinese Communist Party, how dangerous is it? China in many ways, right, since, from, since they occupied Tibet in the 1950s, they still do not know Tibetan people. They still do not know the Tibetan identity, Tibetan culture. They want Tibet to be stable. Mm -hmm. So who can make Tibet stable? Mm -hmm. right, they know it is His Holiness. Mm -hmm. But somehow they also try to reject his, the position of His Holiness in this white paper itself, even though His Holiness has consistently worked on the middle way policy for a long time, but still they mention about the lie clique or the lie factions or something like that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this, I think China need to understand the real Tibet, the Tibetan people's aspirations. Right. So, about this issue, it is only for the political objective that China is working on or China is interested into the reincarnation yeah. of His Holiness. Mm -hmm. His Holiness has made it very clear in 2011 statement. Mm -hmm. right? Any government, any individual cannot take responsibility of that mm -hmm. except His Holiness right. on the reincarnation of His Holiness. Right. That, that, that has been a very clear statement on yes. the matter of reincarnation. Lekshila, I, I know we do not have much time to discuss uh, further. Uh, would you like to wrap up on this white paper today? On this white paper, the most important thing I would say is the conclusion. Mm. Right. As a matter of fact, they have been saying that the prosperity about Tibet issue, whatever it may be, it is to ensure stability. Stability is their number one priority. So it is already there. And as a matter of fact, it is also, uh, they are talking about strengthening the borders, right? So this is also being quite sensitized. So uh, there are lots of resettlement projects going on, right? Shokang village, they are building up all these things on the Indian borders. So it's quite, uh, uh, quite a kind of assurance on, mm -hmm. on the Chinese side that they are not just lying behind, but they are uh, right, putting efforts in making Tibet a Chinese territory, right, which I don't think historically it is not true. Right. So Tibet was independent and for resolving the Southern Tibetan conflict, the China has to work on to resolve in understanding the aspirations of Tibetan people, not within the framework of the development, infrastructural development, but with the preservation of Tibetan identity and culture and traditions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lekshila. Thank you. Us. Thank you, Chimla. That was the spokesperson of the Central Tibetan Administration, Tenzin Lekshila, debunking the claims of the Chinese Communist Party in its re newly released The CCP Policies on the Governance of Shizang in the New Era Approach and Achievements. Thank you for watching.